Welcome students. In this video, we are going to talk about ionic bonds. Now, this one's going to be really brief because this is just an overview of general chemistry of what you learned about ionic bonds, mostly used to contrast covalent bonds, which in organic chemistry is going to be the majority of what we speak about. So let's just remind ourselves that atoms end up gaining or losing electrons in order to form ions. These ions are either positive or they are negative, and then this, they are attracted to one another. So atoms that have a low electronegativity value are going to give up their electrons, and they are going to form positive ions. So they give up their electrons, they allow their electrons to be stolen from them. Whereas elements that have high values of electronegativity really have a desire, if atoms had feelings, to pull electrons toward themselves, and so they will steal electrons from other atoms to create the negative ions. Remember from general chemistry, we called positive ions were cations, and negative ions were anions. In general, metals tend to have low electronegativity values and thus form cations, and nonmetals have higher electronegativity values, where the halogen family has the highest electronegativity value of the entire periodic table, and thus really commonly form anions. I mean, they can't form cations. So why do these things form in the first place? Stability. Everything about organic chemistry is stability. These ions are forming because the ultimate goal is to have a full outer shell of electrons. In general chemistry, you call this a full octet. And so when you have that full outer shell of electrons, then there is a stability associated with that. If you only need one more electron to get that full outer shell, you're going to steal an electron from something else. If you have one too many electrons, you're not going to get seven more. Instead, you're going to lose that one electron. So these ions form, and then what ends up happening is they make this lattice. And I have two diagrams of a lattice here. Right, so here's diagram one, and here's diagram two. They're both illustrating a lattice, but the diagram on the left, diagram one, is illustrating what's called the ball and stick version. It's where you have um, a line being drawn to indicate that these atoms are um, electronically attracted to one another and thus are in a bond. Whereas drawing number two is more realistic. In drawing number two, you have what's called the space filling method. And this is really showing that chloride ion is bigger than sodium ion. And what's happening is the chloride ion takes up more space. And there's really not a line between the two uh, ions. Really, they're just electrostatically attracted to one another. Let's remind ourselves of a couple of characteristics of ionic bonding. When we see the lattice over here on your right-hand side, this is showing what a crystal might look like. So you have sodium ion and chloride ion just repeating over and over again, you know, from left to right, from top to bottom. It's making this big structure. But when you report sodium chloride as a general chemistry student, you don't write, Na52Cl52, what you do instead is you report the smallest whole number ratio of the atoms or ions in the crystal lattice. So what you're saying is I have a one to one ratio. I have one sodium for every one chlorine. And that's called a formula unit. In general, ionic substances really have very high melting points. Imagine you're in your kitchen and you put salt in a pot on the stove. No water, just salt in the pot. And you turn on your stove. That salt will not melt. It will not turn into liquid salt, not on your stove, because these ionic compounds have extraordinarily high melting points. Because ionic compounds are polar, 
they are going to dissolve in polar solvents. We're going to talk about polarity a little bit later in more depth, but you probably remember from general chemistry hearing somebody say like dissolves like, and that's just a silly, simple way to say polar compounds dissolve polar compounds. And ionic compounds are the ultimate polar compounds because they have one entity that's completely positive and one that's completely negative. After they dissolve in water, what ends up happening is then they create a solution that conduct, can conduct electricity. Now, here is how little organic chemists care about these compounds. In organic chemistry, every ionic compound is called a salt. Yep, it doesn't matter if it's sodium chloride or not. Whenever we make a compound at the end that's a byproduct and it's ionic, we just call it a salt. So we don't really need to know a whole lot of stuff about ionic bonding, but what I do want to do is make sure that we go through some of that review material so that we can contrast to covalent bonding, which is coming up next. Thanks for your attention. I'll see you in the next one. This is Katoni signing out.